Well, Shane, I know we're looking for a good tree for a saddle. I don't have any experience for this. You pick a tree out. We can use it on about any tree, uh, but that one, I believe, looks perfect, Chad. All right, that looks good to me. Shane, you introduced something to me that I've actually still never done, but we've talked a little about it, and that is saddle hunting. Tell me a little bit about generally what saddle hunting is, and essentially this is using a harness system in lieu of a normal traditional tree stand. Yeah, so saddle hunting essentially it's, it's a lightweight form of hunting where you're you're wearing a harness. It's, it's a uh, purpose-made tree saddle that's built for the purpose of a hunter spending extended periods of time in it. It's combined with a lightweight climbing method and you climb the tree and you will, you will hang suspended from a tether which is attached to the tree tied to your harness that you're going to be sitting in or leaning back against and your feet are going to be on a small platform of some type that's going to be attached to the tree underneath you. And literally when you leave the ground you're going to be tethered to the tree where falling is not really a possibility all the way up until your hunting position. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Sir. Okay. So using it in a way where you are attached and a fall is not possible is, is very, very, very important. Yeah. So the saddle system. What is the benefits of hunting with a tree saddle? It's very lightweight. It's very simple to walk in with. Instead of carrying a large stand in, it's gonna be snagging on trees and branches. You can literally wear it. You are facing the tree. It gives you more usable range around the tree to shoot from. Okay. It's very safe. You know, like you said, you're tied in from the minute you leave the ground to the minute your feet touch the ground again. When a person sees this, they're gonna immediately go, well, that kind of looks like what I see a lineman wearing or maybe a rock climber. It's very similar gear repurposed for hunting, correct? Exactly. I bet if you ask 10 different climbers how they climb and what tools they needed, you'd probably get 10 different answers. But to keep it simple, tell me exactly what equipment is needed here. A set of climbing sticks is a great way to get started. They're easy to use, they're easy to learn. You're gonna need a foot platform to put your feet on once you get up to hunting height for stability to shoot off of. You're gonna need a saddle to hold you. Attached to the saddle is gonna be a bridge. Lineman's belt to help you get up and down on the sticks. Some type of rope grab and a carabiner to attach that lineman's belt to your saddle and you're gonna need a tether. Again, some type of rope grab and a carabiner on that tether that goes around the tree that attaches to your saddle to hold you when you're suspended. So on the saddle, I step inside it, making sure I step through the bridge. There are leg loops, I'm gonna attach them. And this webbing, that uh, the pad, the back of the saddle, is actually what's gonna be holding me as I sit I down. Guess. So that's where the bulk of my body's weight is gonna be carried. What are they rated to hold, what kind of weight? Some of the lightest rated ones are rated around 350, 400 pounds. They'll hold plenty of weight, there's no concern there at all. So the next step for me is I'm going to take my step. This small platform will actually be what my feet will rest against when I get to hunting height. Okay. You can purchase these online as well. I made this one and tied it up. It's a step aider. A step aider, essentially, with you using a one step, just gives you two more steps. Correct, yes. That's all this is, is it's a strap that's a two more steps to get you a little bit higher. Correct, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So I walk up to the tree and I'm gonna put it about this high. So I want my first foot to be able to reach my step aider. Okay. Throw my rope around the tree. I'm gonna attach my step to the tree using the cam cleat and the rope. Make sure the rope's ran back out of the way so I'm not gonna snag it and kick it loose with my feet. So this type of cleat, that is good right there? Yes, sir. That's rated for 500 pounds plus. It comes from the sailing industry. Okay. It'll hold It'll hold plenty of weight. Okay. I'm gonna set my stick. I'm gonna pull down on it. Okay. And then I'm gonna put my body weight into it to set it a little bit more. I'm gonna set my stick. All right. Now, the next step is to take the rope that I'm actually gonna be using. I will climb up this rope and I will also come back down this rope by rappelling. Okay. This is a simple knot. Okay. I'm just gonna tie a simple overhand figure eight into it. And you can buy these already pre-tied. Yes, sir. You can buy them pre-tied, yep. And I'm gonna use a carabiner through the loop. I'm gonna then attach this around the tree. And you say carabiner, these are not regular carabiners you go buy at Walmart. Absolutely. They have a way that these, these will tighten back down and screw closed. Correct, yes. Don't just grab any old regular carabiner that's not made for climbing, right? Buy a climbing rated carabiner. I turned around so that my screw gate is facing out away from the tree. It's not gonna get bound up against the tree. And that's gonna hang for a second. Okay. So, I'm gonna gather a couple of things here. I'm gonna need this in a moment to descend the tree. This is a repelling ring and another carabiner. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna clip it onto my belt right here. It's gonna be with me going up the tree. I will need that to get down. And I'm going to use an ascender. It's a one-way rope grab. So I'm gonna attach it to the rope and it grabs the rope. I gotcha. So it allows me to ascend up. 
I release the tension on it and I'm going to descend. Oh, okay. okay. So at this point, my carabiner is going to attach to my ascender. That attaches to my bridge. Okay. Once you pull that tight, it's physically not possible for you to fall without a major malfunction. <laughs> Correct. When I climb using an aider, I'm going to use a toe to tree method. My toe is going to touch the tree. That's what's going to lock me out and help me hold that rope steady and stable. I'm going to go ahead and start working my tether up the tree. You know, the most dangerous time is when the tether gets below your correct, the end yeah. point of your body, right? I mean, every time you take a step, you're pulling it up. Yes. You want to pull that up every time. Yeah, and keep it tight, yeah. So at this point, I'll sit back. I always ease into my saddle slowly at first. Okay. Let it sit, make sure my rope's good. I'm gonna hang free. All right. So at this point, my tether has me. I'm hanging in my saddle. I'm gonna reach down, grab this little wire, pull my step up, release my cam cleat. My step comes up with me. You're gonna start the whole process over, it looks like. Yep, the whole process starts over. I'm gonna reset my step, set it back in my cam cleat. So let me ask you something. If you were doing this and this tree had a big limb that come in right here, once you move your tether up over top of it, you could go around the limb here, couldn't you? That's correct, and in that case- But you're case, gonna detach yourself for a split second to get above it, right? No, sir, I would not. What I would do is I would carry a second tether with me. Okay. I would tie that one, tie off to it, and then I would leapfrog that tether over. I got you, okay. On a traditional stand where you're a climbing stand, you're limited to trees without limbs. Correct. With this, with a second tether, that's not a concern. That's correct, yeah. Man, that little cam lock on there is really nice because you're reaching below you. You want to make sure you got a way that you can take it off of there pretty quickly and easily. That's right? correct, uh -huh. yeah. Now, one thing we didn't showcase, you would have attached either your firearm, your muzzleloader, or your bow before you took off and had that clipped to your belt. Right, I would have that tied onto my harness. The top step of that stick is now my platform. Okay. So I've got a small rope that I would tie up here. I would hang my bow. I would pull my bow and my backpack up. Okay. Hang that here. And at this point, I've got shots. I could shoot here. I can come out on the stick, shoot over here. I can come off to this side of the tree. And that's how I hunt. Can you turn and face the other way? Like I can. what if it was directly behind you? Yes. So now you're up there to your hunting hype. You're literally on the platform, which is your step. So on your last climb, you just don't detach it and you leave it, right? I leave it, yeah. This becomes my tether, which will become my repelling rope. So when I get up to hunting height, pull my bow up, and I'm gonna take this master rope and I'm gonna tuck it back in my backpack to keep it up. Another thing I really like about this, a deer walking under me does not see steps on the bottom of the tree. Yeah, there's literally nothing until your last step. There's no rope suspending. You've pulled everything up. So it's out of the way. Is shooting from a seated position pretty easy? I prefer to shoot from the standing position. Okay. So this is my favorite shot, is out here. Now tell me how you navigate that rope with your bowstring and your draw. Is that something? You're just over top of it. I'm up over it. Okay. So I'm gonna bring my bow out. I'm gonna come across my tether and I'm gonna draw here. Okay. So it is clear of it. So in that saddle right now, how comfortable is that for an extended four, five, six hour hunt? Oh, it's very comfortable. I could spend a long time here. All right. It's very comfortable. It's like you're sitting in a hammock against a tree. Yeah. Now, once your hunt is over, we gotta come back down. There's a couple different methods you could do this. You could literally do it in reverse of the way you did this, where you could scoot your tether down a little bit, reach down, grab the step. The quickest, easiest way for you would be to do what? Simply repel out of the tree. So this is a very simple setup. This is a repelling ring. I'm simply gonna run a bite of rope through this ring. And I'm gonna take a carabiner and run it through over here. And that just introduces friction to that rope. That is then gonna to attach to my bridge. There's many devices. This is a simple, easy, cheap way to do it. You can buy repelling belay devices. So anytime I do this, I always, I'm super slow and super careful from one device to another. And that's something that's just gonna take some practice. Look up on YouTube, different ways that people are doing this. Yeah. I probably wouldn't go buy the equipment and go out the very first day and climb from a tree stand. I would do most of my trial and error at about three feet, four feet off the ground. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. So if you see this knot that is behind my carabiner, this pull down rope, I'm gonna take this figure eight after I've lowered my bow and my bow's attached to the other end of it. I'm actually gonna hook this carabiner into my rope and it's gonna have a secondary function in a minute. So just like I'm repelling anywhere else, my weight's now on my repel rope. So I'm going to 
always check my equipment. So I'm gonna start coming down, lowering the weight a little bit. Things holding just fine. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna stop myself here, remove my step. Okay. Step's free. It'll be waiting for me at the bottom of the tree. I'm just gonna come on down the tree. Just walk down the tree. There you go. And I'm down. You might look at this and go, well, wait a minute, you got a problem. Your rope is up there and you're down here, so tell us how you're gonna do this. Right, so I've got my pull down rope attached. This is where your bow is attached. It's a little yes, heavier sir. duty than a normal bow rope. I'm simply gonna pull my rope, work it loose, and work it down the tree. There we go. There you go. Now you would round up your ropes and your gear and shove it back into your backpack. One great thing about this, it's completely approved and safe for public lands because I can't even tell you've been on this tree. Yeah. Literally less than a climbing stand as far as there's not a marker or a scar on this tree. Right. So this looks like one of those things you might want to get started in. You know you got to buy your ropes and your saddles, your clips and your carabiners, but if you have climbing steps, there's also a way to utilize those as well. Mm -hmm. And you said that would be more for a person that's just getting started in this. If you don't mind, give me a walkthrough on how I can do that. So before we go up the tree, we're actually going to put gear ties through a molly loop. These will be used in just a moment. All right. Now, make sure you step through the bridge. All right, through the bridge. Uh -huh. Now I like to pull it up and put my waist belt on first. Grab your waistband, which is underneath. It is sewn inside the waistband there. there I see go. it, there you go. All right, now how tight will I want to get this? Just get it snug. Get it too tight, it gets uncomfortable. How about that? That's perfect. All right, now. Now reach through your waistband and grab your leg straps and bring them through. Okay, I see those. Be careful not to pull them through your bridge. I prefer mine back here. Okay. There's some loops you'll feel back on your thigh. Some people prefer to use the loops up on their waistband. Okay, now go ahead and snug those leg straps. Kind of like that? Yes, sir. All right, there we go. So this is 10 millimeter rope. We're gonna use this for our lineman's rope. And this is what's gonna secure us to the tree while we're climbing. So again, I'm gonna do an overhand figure eight with it. Now, I'm gonna come into your lineman's loop. So I like to work my lineman's belt with my right hand. Okay. So I'm gonna girth through this loop right here. Okay. And there's one of those on both sides. Yeah, it's going to connect a little differently on this side. This is a rope grab. On my lineman's belt, you're going to be doing a lot of adjusting, so I prefer to use a mechanical device. Okay. I'm going to need one more tool, and that's our actual tether. On this one, I'm going to leave a rope prussic. There's not a lot of adjustment that goes on once you get set, and I like the stability that comes with rope. As a safety note, one thing I didn't show you earlier, but if I'm going to set for an extended period of time, I might use two attachment devices. I might take a mechanical rope grab and connect it and back it up with a rope grab just in case the mechanical device fails. Okay. With this, Chad, you do it however you want to. I like to throw this around my neck. Okay, so I'm gonna put this, okay. okay. So, the sticks, uh, one thing I'll make mention of, the height you can get to in the tree is gonna be limited by the number of sticks you have and the number of steps each stick has on it. Okay. So, you can probably get, with the four of these sticks, you can probably get 22, 24 feet if you want. If you want to, yes sir. All right, so that sticks nice and tight. It's on the tree very well. Now what I want to do is load my belt up with anything I'm going to take up the tree with me. So I'll let you set these on your belt. So I put those gear ties on your saddle before you went. That's what these are for. I yes, got sir. you. And just kind of tie it up behind your back there. That's going to be your foot platform that we're going to set in just a minute. Okay. We're going to set this other stick in a second. So use your other gear tie that's in the middle of your back for this right. stick. I'm just going to give it one twist All to right. just kind of hold it on there so you can reach back pretty easily All right. and get it off. Okay, so now take your lineman's belt, All so right. adjust the Kong duck out so you've got plenty of room, and now throw it around the tree and bring it down so that the Kong duck will connect to this carabiner that you've got on your belt. Okay. Now at ground level, I just sit back and make sure everything's connected, it's tight, and it's going to hold me. From right there, there's no way I could fall. Okay. I begin my ascent up the sticks at this point. Toe to tree, there you go. Now, when I'm on my bottom step, I go ahead and set my second stick. So you can go ahead and bring that stick around and set that. All right, so I wanna get this here, get it straight, get it tight, and then, and then obviously we wanna set it. So now I'm going up another step. All right, now the platform is right here. So this is gonna go Connects here. just like the sticks. Always make sure the rope is a little bit higher, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. You don't want to get it below. And then a lot of times I'll do this and then use this to pull it tight. Is that how you do it as well? Yeah. One thing about a tree saddle is the side pressure that you're going to be putting on it as you step around from side to side to take your shot. Feels pretty good right there. What do you think? It looks good. 
All right, so from here, I'm gonna take my last couple steps. And now, this is where you're gonna wanna set your tether that's hanging around your neck. Take it and girth hitch it around the tree and run everything, including the prussic cord, through that loop right there. Make sure that prussic gets to this side of the loop. Now I'm gonna reach up and hand you a carabiner. If you okay. can reach it, you're gonna use that to connect that prussic to your bridge. And head height for the tether to be set is a, just a good rule of thumb. It's a good starting point. You can adjust from there. Always make sure your prussic is on this side of your girth hitch. When it is, you can let that lay. So once I get up here, the fact that I got the two straps, uh -huh. does this strap need to stay against the tree? It does not. You will remove that and hunt without that at this point. Okay. Once this is tied and secured, I'm good to remove this. Now you don't want to do that beforehand, otherwise you have a chance to fall. Instead of completely unhooking, one thing I do is I start releasing the tension on my lineman's belt and move the tension to my tether so that I'm not completely unhooked and loose. I gotcha. I like that secure feeling of moving tension from one to the other letting it pull tight against the tree. Now I am 100% on this. Yes. Uh -huh. I can remove my lineman's belt. And then you would just stow that away at this point. So now, at this point, I'd want to pull this off to the side just a little bit. Me being right-handed, I'm going to pull it over here just a little bit, and I'm going to start bringing up my bow. Now, at this point, I've retrieved my bow. I've gotten rid of my rope that I towed the bow up here with. I've noticed that people who saddle hunt almost always attach something around the tree where they hang their bow so that it's, they're not holding it the entire time, and usually their backpack. I'm ready to knock an arrow and start my hunt. I can shoot any angle all the way from directly behind the tree. I can also go all the way around. I'm shooting that 180 degrees. Now, if I take the bow over on this side, turn myself a little bit, I can pick up that shot all the way around, almost 360 degrees. Now, do you spend more time standing or more time suspended? Half and half, probably. Yeah. So right now, I'm completely suspended. I've got my bow set right here. I'd probably have it attached. And if something came by, I could pretty quietly come into shooting position quickly to make a shot. All right, let's go through the process of getting down. What I do is I do a completely inverse. I would put my lineman belt back. I would transition weight to the lineman's belt. Then I would come off my tether, remove it, and then come down. Well, I'll tell you what, that was actually not as difficult as I thought. You kind of made it simple by walking me through and showing me every single thing I need and how to use it. What a quick, effective way to get up a tree safely and much more comfortable than you might think. I think it's a great tool for a hunter to have.